Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, the program dedicated to sharing timely information about the community hospital that's been taking care of Washington Township Healthcare District residents since it opened in 1958. Washington Hospital Today is provided for the sole purpose of informing residents about healthcare topics and issues that have been covered during community forums, free health and wellness classes, or as part of educational sessions held during the district's open board meetings. This program is one more way that Washington Hospital helps empower you, the residents of the district, by providing information needed to make informed decisions about your health. Today's presenter is Dr. Sunil Dewan. Dr. Sunil Dewan is a graduate of San Francisco State University and the University of Southern California School of Medicine. He completed an internship and residency in internal medicine at UCSF, followed by a residency in dermatology at Mount Sinai Hospital in Miami, where he was also chief resident. He is board certified in internal medicine and dermatology. Dr. Dewan is a fellow of the American College of Physicians and the American Academy of Dermatology. In addition, Dr. Dewan is an assistant adjunct professor at the Stanford University Department of Dermatology. So we're going to talk about the sun, beauty of the beast. So um, that's me. We have offices. I'm part of this uh, practice. We have offices in Fremont and Milpitas and uh, I attend at Stanford a couple times a month. What are the functions of the skin? It offers protection, temperature regulation, sensation, and secretion. There's three layers, the epidermis, which is the top layer, the dermis, which is the second layer, and the subcutis, which is the third layer where fat resides. Uh, and fat is uh, in everybody, even the thinnest person has it as an insulating device. The skin cell starts at the bottom of the epidermis and migrates towards the skin surface to form a protective barrier. It takes about 21 to 28 days for this to happen. The pigment cells are very important in that they offer protection from the sun. Those of you can see that the person on the left uh, has not a lot of sun, uh, has, does not have a lot of uh, pigment producing cells called melanocytes and the person on the right has a lot more of them and they have more pigment within them. So the person on the left is designed genetically to live in a more dark environment in northern Europe, and the person in the, on the right is structured to live in a more sunny environment and needs more protection from the sun, so basically has a natural tan all year because that's her genetic structure. If the person on the left moved to a sunny area where the person on the right was living, uh, they would tend to get more problems with the sun because they don't have any natural protection. So the hair follicle is also important in, in the skin, and that's often associated with, or almost always associated with what's called sebaceous glands, which are the oil glands, the hair shaft, and then the sweat glands. The sun, it's the giver and taker of life. Some facts about sunlight. The risk of sunburn is greatest between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. 90% of sunlight can penetrate cloudy or overcast days. Some light fabrics, wet clothes can transmit a large amount of sunlight to the skin. Hats and beach umbrellas do not provide full protection. Sunlight is reflected by sand, water, porch decks, and snow. And ultraviolet A rays can penetrate glass and plastic, and we'll go over these rays in a second. Ultraviolet radiation is part of the normal spectrum that we see all over, including x-rays and other light sources. Uh, there are three types, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVA and B are responsible for the effects on the skin. UVC is filtered uh, very high in the sky. So those are the three types of light and where they penetrate. So B goes down to the depth of the epidermis, and A goes all the way down to the depth of the dermis, but nothing really penetrates into the fat or what's called subcutis. So ultraviolet B rays are the ones on the left are the burning rays, intense during midday, less intense during winter months, more intense closer to the equator, and don't penetrate glass or plastic. On the right, the UVA radiation is all day, all the time, intense everywhere, 
no geographic region is is um, uh, you know is exempt, and it penetrates through glass and plastic. So you get the same amount of UVA radiation in northern Canada as you would in southern California, but the B is the one that varies the most. So B is absorbed by the top layers of the skin and can cause skin cancer. It also produces sunburns, tanning, photoaging, and photo damage. UVA rays penetrate deep into the skin, intensify the damage of the B rays, may contribute to skin cancer, and give probably a lot more effect on premature aging and damage. What are some of the variables of sun exposure? Skin type's important. So this guy uh, is fair-skinned, light-haired, uh, burns easily, never tans. He's highest risk for problems. This gentleman is more, uh, and first gentleman was more from way northern part of Europe. This gentleman's from Central Europe. He's a little darker skin, a little darker hair, darker eyes. Usually doesn't burn. Tans, sometimes burns, but mostly tans. This gentleman's from Southern Europe. So people from like Israel, Egypt, uh, Iran, East Indian, people who have the term Hispanic, which encompasses many ethnic types, would fit into this category. They tend to get no burning, always tan, have a lower risk of skin cancer, tend to be darker hair, darker skin, um, but don't have zero risk, they're just lower. And this is a lady of African American origin. She's got dark hair, dark skin, you know, darker skin and dark eyes. She has the lowest risk, but again, her risk is not zero, it's just lower. So she never burns, always maybe gets a little darker in the summer and then lightens up pretty quickly in the winter. So the gentleman on the left upper side is the highest risk, right lower uh, side, uh, that lady is the lowest risk for problems with the sun and skin cancer. So times of the day are important. Uh, remember, UVB varies all through the day, but UVA stays constant. Sunny versus cloudy, again, UVB is, varies, but UVA doesn't. Geographic location, uh, again, if you're in Miami or closer to the sun, like in Denver or Tahoe, you'll tend to get more effect from the sun. Altitude is important, again, if you're in Denver or Tahoe. And reflection from water and sun and uh, reflecting off uh, snow, that kind of stuff. The ozone layer was a big problem about 20 years ago. It was being eaten up by hairsprays, but those have now been taken off the market, so it's not a big deal. The ozone layer was a protective layer around the earth, helping us to filter out some of the UV rays. So what are some of the effects of the sun? Cause of sunburn, tanning, aging, allergies, diseases, and cancer. So the last two are the most important that we talk about. Actually, the last one is the most important. So the manifestations of sun damage start with sunburn on one side, over time, you get brown spots, then fine wrinkles, then deep wrinkles, then precancers called actinic keratosis, and then finally skin cancer. So this can go from, a, from the left to the right within 10 years. What does sun damage skin look like? It's wrinkled, it's sagging, it's tough and leathery, it's got red, yellow, gray, or brown blotches, it's got brown spots called liver spots, and it's got precancers on the hands or face called actinic keratoses. So, no sunlight on the left, lots of sunlight on the right. Most of the wrinkles on the lady on the right with the brown spots and some of those red spots on her nose are from sun damage. So if you put her in a dark room for most of her life, she'd look like the lady on the, on the left. The difference in age is only 30 to 35 years between them. This lady on the left is in her early, 30, early to mid-30s. That lady is, I think, in her late 60s. So it's not a huge amount of time that it took to go from there to there. So 30 years ago, that lady before was probably not like this quite because she was getting damaged, but she was better off. And over time, a lot of those fine lines, those vertical creases you see, a lot of that's not from getting older, it's from sun damage. This is somebody who has been a lifeguard for 50 years. So most of the changes on this lady's face are probably not from aging, except for the jowls that you see over here, and maybe some of the deep creases, a lot of this is from sun damage. And she's pretty bronzed. She was a lifeguard for about 50 years. And you see the pebbliness of the chin at the bottom that looks like little pebbles? That's all sun damage. So those of you who are a little older like me, 
know about little Ozone Annie. Those of you who are younger, unfortunately, have missed her, but she's there. The sun will come out tomorrow. That was a famous play and stuff. So what are some of the benign skin growths that you see? Those are precancers called actinic keratosis. See that rough spot, those two little volcanoes there? Those are precancers from the sun. And if you leave them alone, a certain percentage are going to develop skin cancer over time. That's a bigger one on the cheek there, that big red spot. You can't miss it. It keeps getting shaved over. And if you look at this guy, it's on the left-hand side. He's got more sun damage on the left. Why does he have more sun damage on the left? Yeah, he's a driver. He's actually a pilot. So he, when he's up there, he's closer to the sun, and he's getting a lot of damage. And so pilots tend to get more skin cancers and damage on the left side, just as we do when we drive, except for the co-pilots who get it on the right side because they're more right-sided. These are not precancers. These are called liver spots, but they're not really from the liver. They're from sun. So if you take this person's hand and get it out of the sun, they won't get a lot of these spots. And a lot of this creasing and wrinkling, a lot of that could probably be prevented by sunscreen. These are thickened growths on the back called seborrheic keratosis. Many of you have them. Many of you will get them. They're benign. They may originate with those brown spots I showed you or can happen on their own, but they can be a marker for sun damage. What are some of the malignant growths? Well, the incidence of skin cancers and melanoma is increasing very rapidly, 15 times more common now than in the 1930s. And why is that? Well, after the war and during the war, that was the war to end all wars, World War II, uh, and Korea, and then Vietnam, and now you know, Iraq, and all these places with a lot of sun. So you're going to see a lot of damage over time. So the veterans, when they came back from Korea and all those places, tended to want to go back to recreation, being outdoors and doing a lot more recreation time out there. And they got a lot of damage when they were in the wars. And their kids and grandkids are now doing a lot of uh, outdoor recreating activities in um, uh, you know, places like Hawaii and doing a lot of hiking and biking without protection. So the question comes up, well, where was all the sun damage 100 years ago? Well, the sun damage was there, but most people were dead by the time they were 50. So you didn't see it. I mean, if you're dead at 50, the sun damage takes a while to come up. So if they had lived another 20 years, they would have seen it. But if you, you know, because in the, like the 1880s, 1890s, the average lifespan wasn't that long. Either were killed in the Civil War or with wars, or you were killed by infections or other diseases. Now we're living a lot longer, so you're going to see a lot of this stuff. Fair-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde, or red-haired people have a very high risk of developing skin cancer, especially the ones who live out in the sun. Cancer, it's an uncontrolled growth. That means it needs to be taken care of. There are three types of skin cancer, basal cell, squamous cell, and melanoma. What's a basal cell look like? Well, it's about 84% of all skin cancers. On sun-exposed areas, looks like a pearly, clear growth that bleeds, crusts over, doesn't want to heal, can do serious local damage and eat away at the face, ear, nose, lip, or eyelid. So really should be taken care of. That's a little basal cell. See the little pearl there? That's a little one. That's a bigger one. That's a real big one. So that was left alone for 20 years. So that one eventually killed the person. Normally, it doesn't kill people. But that's the good, the bad, and this is the ugly. So, Squamous cells, what do they look like? Well, they kind of look almost like a basal cell. If you look on the right-hand side, I'll show you a better picture. They account for 14% of all skin cancers. A firm red bump on the sun-exposed areas of the body, tops of the hands, back of the arms, face and ears. Can spread to other parts of the body, though it's rare. That's a squamous cell. So this squamous cell was being covered with the, by this lady with makeup all the time. Finally, she couldn't cover it up, so she came in and saw us. So. Melanoma. Those of you who are asleep can wake up now. That's a melanoma. So melanomas account for 1% of all skin cancers, are less common but far more dangerous than the other two, often appear as a shaded brown or black spot, since melanoma cells still produce pigment, they're from the pigment-producing cells, can spread to other parts of the body and best treated when diagnosed early. So the ABCDs of melanoma detection are A is for asymmetry. If you draw a line through the center of that spot on the right-hand side, it's asymmetric. It doesn't look symmetric. It's not a mirror image of itself. B is for border. 
The edges are irregular, ragged, notched, or blurred. C is for color. There's a variation in color. In this thing, you see reds and browns and blacks and all sorts of stuff. The diameter is greater than the head of a pencil eraser, which is six millimeters. Okay? So that's how we tell what a potential melanoma could be. That's a melanoma on the face. That's a melanoma. That looks pretty ominous. That's a melanoma that will kill you because it's coming out of your skin already. That's a bump. And by this time, it's pretty fatal. Melanoma will be fatal if not detected early enough. So you think you're having a hard, that you have a hard job. It's a real job, actually. This is people who have to smell your underarms for the deodorant companies. <laughs> it's true. This is a true job. It sounds, looks funny. It's funny to me, too. But these are people who are called noses. They have a very sensitive nasal thing. God knows why they would do this. Um, prevention and treatment. How do you prevent? Skin cancer should be treated by a dermatologist or other MD who is trained to do this, which a lot of doctors are, but 95% of the time we end up taking care of it. What are the methods of treatment? Well, you can burn it, you can freeze it, that's one and two, or you can cut it out. That's generally the best way to do it. Now, there are some new creams coming out that may ha have good benefit, and we use them. We will use them for certain areas, and people who are really old and don't want a lot done, we'll do number two, or we'll use a cream on it. You can also do radiation to some of these guys. Well, that's treatment, but we want to talk about prevention because that's more important. So, avoid sun during peak hours. Go before 10 a.m. or after 3 p.m. Use a sunscreen, SPF 30 or greater. 30 to 50 is fine. Wear loose clothing that covers exposed parts and wear a hat. Avoid tanning, sunburns, or using tanning booths, especially the ones down here in that mall over there. There's a tanning booth place. Don't go there. Don't do this. Not a good idea. Or this. That's a burn. But it's not really a burn. It's from an ad. So this is makeup. Sunscreens. Photo protection. Apply a sunscreen or sunblock or wear protective clothing. She's got a hat. She's got eyeglasses. She's wearing sunblock. She's covered. She's got a you know, thing above her, an uh, umbrella. So she's pretty well protected. What does this SPF mean? Well, it, they took a volunteer, put their arm in the sun, or an artificial sun, sun lamp, and looked at how long it took them to burn. Then they did it with the sunblock. So if it took you 10 minutes to burn without the sunblock and 30 minute, 300 minutes to burn with the sunblock, the SPF is 30. So the difference between 30 and 50 is only about 2 or 3% extra sun protection. Above 50, it's probably not going to do anything much more. So the most common question I get is, I wore a SPF 100, but I still got a burn. Well, because you didn't reapply it. It's gone in two hours. So be like this guy. He's a cannibal, ex-cannibal from New Guinea. He's covered nicely. Here. Or do that. No, don't do that. That's kind of weird, but that's, <laughs> that's a lot of moisturizer there or sunblock. Okay. Best is SPF 30 or greater with titanium or zinc oxide. I'm going to show you examples. These are not, by all means, not the only sunblocks. But these are a couple of them that have titanium and zinc in them. Again, some other ones with titanium and zinc. Neutrogena makes them. They all make them. The key with sunblock is people say, well, I'm going to go get sunblock. I have sunblock. I said, do you wear it? No. Why don't you wear it? Because it's too greasy. Well, then it's worthless. You need to get sunblock that you'll use consistently. Generally, lighter sunblocks with titanium or zinc are the ones people use. The ones that you won't use are the ones you take to Hawaii because they smell and they're greasy. So daily sunscreen use for people susceptible is probably a smart thing, but get the ones you'll use. And the ones you'll use are the lighter sunblocks that don't have a smell and don't burn your eyes, especially men. Men will not use greasy things. Women won't use them either. But men especially are bad about doing any of this. There's makeup with sunscreen now. This is a SPF 30 makeup. There's a few of them that are out there. Lip sunblock. Now it says SPF 15. That's too low. Now it's 30. This is an old slide. OK. Any brand with titanium dioxide and zinc oxide with SPF 30, UVB and UVA blockers that you will use regularly is OK. okay. Other ingredients like Avo, Benzone, Parasol, et cetera, are good but can be more irritating. So about 5% of people to 10% will say, I'm irritated. So we tell them, get titanium or zinc. 
It does not irritate. It's also the best blocker. So that zinc is the one people used to put on their noses that would turn white. Now they make them that don't turn white. They're really nice. I got them on now. I got one on right now. And it's, my face is not, I mean, not that white. So Most are good. Look for ones that are lighter if you have oily skin or moisturizing if you have drier skin. Price does not correlate with effectiveness. So it's Chanel versus Walmart. What's the difference? Huh? Right. Some of it's price. Some of it's the elegance of the block. So Walmart brand Equate, which is a perfectly good brand, is great for Hawaii because it covers and is greasy. But normally people won't use it because it's too greasy. So for daily wear, it's probably not what, you, what most people want. But if you love it and you have dry skin, use it. I'm not saying not to use it. But if you took 100 people, they don't like the greasiness. So you got to pick one you like. So if you have dry skin, you'll love it. But most of us don't like stuff that's greasy. So it's a personal choice. Sprays are not as good as lotions or creams. They're, they're easier to apply, but they don't work as well. Apply 15 minutes before going out and reapply every two to three hours. hours otherwise, the sunscreen is gone. Water resistant only lasts for 80 minutes in the water and must be reapplied especially to the neck and the back and the back of the legs. So I was on a Boy Scout trip this week, last week, at Catalina Island, which is supposed to be in Southern California, which there was an overcast day with 400 Boy Scouts and a bunch of adults. We were hiking in the middle of God knows where. We were dropped off by canoe. And a bunch of guys got burned because they didn't wear black. Even the guys with my skin color got burned because they didn't take their sunblock with them. So that was a great um, way of explaining to the kids that you really need to, and, they, and the Boy Scout counselors told them about 50 times to bring their sunblock, and boys who are 13 to 15 don't listen, so they got burned. Always apply after any medication, such as those for acne. Put makeup over the sunblock, so it's always medicine, sunblock, makeup. Some makeup has sunscreen. Look for those with greater than 30. 25 to 30 SPF is fine. Two layers of SPF 15 does not equal 30. The protection is that of the highest SPF applied. Okay. All right. You, people say, well, what do you recommend? I like these brands. Why do I like them? They're easily available, some of them, and they're light. So Elta, Solbar, Neutrogena, and Aveeno. Out of, the, out of those, Elta's the lightest, but Neutrogena is fine too, Aveeno is fine, Solbar is fine. The brands that are marketed under the name of a store are cheaper but tend to be oilier and not as pleasant to use. Because of this, they may not be used as regularly as they should. That doesn't mean they're bad, it just means you've got to get used to using them, that's all. Vitamin D, not a big problem, except I'm seeing a lot of low vitamin D women, and they haven't used sunscreen, but they just, they just have low vitamin D. Just get enough in the diet or take a supplement. So I tell everybody over 50 or 55, you should probably be taking a supplement anyway. Most of the uproar has been created by the tanning industry people to scare people, basically. So if they say, oh, if you don't tan, you don't have enough vitamin D, that's not quite correct. So anyway, do a monthly skin self-examination called an early warning system. Do this if you're in a high-risk group. That means you're fair-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, have had skin cancer or precancers before, especially if there's a family history of melanoma. Definitely if your parent or sibling has had a melanoma, you better go examine yourself quickly. If you're in a low-risk group, means you're darker skin, never burn, never go out, no family history, don't need to do it. This is at the aad.org website. Go into the patient section at aad.org. All this stuff is in there. What do you look for? Growths or molds which are changing in size, color, or shape. Growths or molds which are itching, bleeding, hurt, or won't heal. Remember the ABCDS system. So if you see a mole and it's asymmetric, irregular border, color's variable, diameter is greater than the head of a pencil eraser, and is itching, burning, or bleeding, you better run to get it taken care of. Again, A, B, C, D, and then S is symptoms. I added the S in there because a lot of times there are symptoms. That's how you recognize a melanoma. In fact, that's how you may recognize other skin cancers as well because they tend to be asymmetric, they tend to have irregular borders, color tends to be uniform, but the diameter shows a growth, and this, they tend to be itchy, burning, or bleeding. Excessive tanning, sun exposure, and the numbers of sunburns is directly related to your risk 
of skin cancer or melanoma. Get a yearly complete skin examination by a dermatologist or personal physician if you're in a high risk group. If you're in a low risk group, you don't need to do this. If you've had one skin cancer, probably not a bad idea to do this. And I'm seeing people of Chinese origin, East Indian origin, Hispanic origin, Vietnamese origin who are getting skin cancers now. African Americans, not common, but it, it happens. Any suspicious growth should be brought to the attention of your dermatologist or physician ASAP. Many of you are in plans that will restrict your access to a specialist, so you make sure your primary care will see it and has to take care of it. And if they don't and you feel suspicious about something, you may need to push the button and say, look, I need to go see somebody. Sometimes you know more than, you know, your feelings may be better than the eyes of the person looking at them. So I'll give you an example. I had a lady who had a mole, had had a melanoma 20 years ago. She had a mole, and she said to me, you know, I, it's something just, I, the, this mole gives me a funny feeling. And I said, has it changed, itched, burned, or bled? She goes, no, none of that. But she said, it may have changed, but I just feel uncomfortable about it. So we looked at it, we photographed it, I measured it. A couple months later, she comes back, it really hadn't changed. So she said, you know what, I just would feel better taking it off. So we took it off. Turned out to be it was melanoma. That's unusual, but that taught me 15 years ago to trust what the person tells me. So if they tell me, you know what, this just something about this doesn't feel right to me, I just get rid of it. Because that one lady, and 15 years later, nothing's ever happened. People have told me that same story and I've removed and never found another one, but that teaches you a lesson. But it hadn't changed. The pictures look the same. So it was weird. And the other thing is, make sure that the biopsy is sent to a laboratory that's good at reading these kind of specimens, especially for melanoma. Because the number one thing that can happen is that if it gets misdiagnosed, it can be delayed. I'll give you another story. I had a patient who had had a biopsy done a year ago, red as a benign mole. Comes back, the mole recurred, I biopsied it, sent it to a very good laboratory at the university here, came back as a melanoma. So it probably was a melanoma to begin with. So it needs to be read carefully. So, oh, resources. Well, we have at our website, you have links to skin cancer sites, centerforderm.com, but the aad.org is a great site. And that's American Academy of Dermatology.org. And they have a patient section that has all the brochures, all the pictures you ever wanted to see. Um, skincancer.org also is a good site. It's, I recently discovered that one. So this guy's in the desert and uh, he's asking for sunscreen only, not water. There's a dead cow over there on the right side. Okay. I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Grilly for inviting me and that's our numbers and you can email us if you have any questions. We can try to answer them for you. Well, I'd like to thank all of you for coming, and I'd like to thank our volunteers and our AV technician, and Dr. Dewan, this was fabulous. Thanks. Thank no you problem. So much. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks. your commitment. No, no problem.